Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Black, White, and Red All Over. I'm Victor Dandridge, the hardest working man in comics. Ryan Seymour, king of Comic Town here in Columbus, Ohio. Boom! And we are back for a big week. What in the world? Right. Like, we ended up cutting, I would have combined four or five books. At least. To get down to six each. Yes. And then within that, we only have one that's the same. Just one. There's a lot of books that we're reading, and we can't wait to jump into it to get you to read all these books yeah. because your Wednesday is about to be it's on. About, yeah, fully spicy. Yes. Fully spicy. All the goodness. Um, okay, so in terms of good reads that you should read, yes. we've got nothing that's the same. Right. So you guys are about to get six books. Mm -hmm. Six. Yeah, because this, this week was an exercise. In, oh, crap. I should have read that. Oh, oh you don't even know. Yeah. Okay? Like, literally, I'm looking at his pile. He's looking at my pile, and we're jealous of each other. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Okay? Um, where do you want to start? Oh, man. Um... Let me start with something that's near and dear to my heart. Yeah, yeah. I am shockingly a huge fan of Army of Darkness, HP Lovecraft, Reanimator, all of that mess. What part of that is shocking? Maybe someone's watching the first episode. Fair game. Fair like, game. Fair game. Okay. So Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they've got Necronomicon Rising, Army of Darkness versus Reanimator. What a good name. Right? It's so clever. Uh, so this is exactly what you would think it is. Um, it is Ash being talked into stopping another Deadite incursion uh, and uh, Herbert West accidentally gets it going. Oh. And so, yeah, and it's written perfectly with that that vibe that, like, the joking, the not seriousness, the, the, the flippancy in the face of, like, actual destruction of the world at right. the hands of evil Sumerian crap. And it's, it's gorgeous. It's drawn so well. It's, the Deadites just look like they, they got like a slime on them that you would want to touch just to see, just to satisfy that curiosity. Uh, and yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. If you're a fan of evil dead army of darkness, reanimator from beyond, definitely, definitely, definitely check this out. Okay. So you said that I had a brain fart mm -hmm. and I had to check. How come we don't have an event called that? I'm uh, sorry. I didn't mean to break your brain, but I'm gonna need you to. I'm gonna need you to make that. I'm gonna need you to make that happen within the next like three or four years. It, yeah, that's not my goal. Okay. How, okay. I just. It, it just like when you when you said it, I was like, hey, I wonder if. Wonder if. And then, no, there's not one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Goals. <laughs> goals. Oh my God. We get. We can't spoil that one. We definitely can't spoil that one. Yeah. That would be. Mm, we're missed. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to sit down and talk to some people. It, yeah, make that happen. Okay. Woo. Okay. So on that same terror train, a, <laughs> a town called Terror, um, issue four. Uh, Steve Niles, Sim uh, Simon uh, Kadransky. Art is so beautiful. Mm, mm, oh my mm, gosh. Mm. This one gets better. Yeah. Yeah. Figure what? that out. Figure that out. Um, the art gets better. Um, we actually get into another space that makes it even more oh. black, white, and red all over. <laughs> um, if you read it, you'll know what we're talking about. Um, okay, there's a twist. Really? Oh, there is a twist. Um, as the story has gone, you know, we've got... My man has been brought here by his dad to find his mom. That's yeah. the story. Uh, right? Uh... Then we figure out that that's what's happened, mm -hmm. and that is why. What? Which creates a huge mystery oh point um, that the rest of the family is going to have to unravel. Um, clearly, his wife is still on, his, on her way to the town, mm -hmm. so that could be bad. But, yeah, yeah, this just hit a point where you're like, oh, oh where is so this going? Good. And if that's true then who is and these are the questions yeah oh, that's interesting because the way they're playing with it right almost every horror property every single one who could it be oh man i'm thinking if i had my druthers it would have to be and this is dark and twisted damien from the omen but as a little kid oh yeah yeah like he's still a little kid that's what I would do. Right? Right? He's extra creepy. We did it for you. We did it for oh you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Man, I, I wish I had friends that 
Stop. Just stop. Right <laughs> say, people, it, you either you either know what scene Vic was referencing, yeah. or you don't, or you don't, or you you haven't watched enough movies, and that's your problem. Here at okay. Damien Daycare, <laughs> where we do it for you. We do it all oh, for you. <laughs> Happy birthday. Okay. <laughs> what else we got? All right, from Marvel Comics, we've got Savage Avengers number three. All right, so we got the creative team of uh, Pepos, Magno, and Grudgerjen. Now, David had asked people that had access to early editions for right. review purposes to not do spoilers, okay. which is perfect is right for us because we don't do it. Yeah. So, having read it, mm-hmm. I now understand why. Mm. It is still this over-the-top, bombastic, bombastic, expendable-style story That's crazy. with Conan and Cloak and Dagger and Black Knight and Electra Daredevil, Weapon H, uh, Anti-Venom. What a team. It is. It's a crazy team. And it's really, really good because they're in Conan's time now mm-hmm. and they're being stalked by. I can't. Why does my brain it. always try to say Deathstroke? Like, I'm so stupid. I mean, he's he's part of the way that we see things now. It, yeah. But it's Deathlock. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. Like, every, like my brain is just stupid. I, like, it was stop, born stop. with, like, feta cheese in it or something. <laughs> so it's just not smart. So. So they're being stalked by Deathlock because Conan has been in and out of the mm-hmm. time stream. And that's totally, totally that's bad. No-no. That's a no-no. And, and the giant chunk of this issue is violence, which the first two were violence. But this is, like, really, really cool violence. And it sets up something. And I, I fully understand why. Okay. For, there's two things that it does. One of which, I think this is the one that's not supposed to be discussed. What? No. Are you kidding? Yeah, so that that's going to be a fun fight. I'm speechless. Right? I'm speechless. I did not see that coming. Like, of the myriad of things that it could have been, wouldn't have guessed that. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, still with Marvel. Ha-ha. Spider-Punk. Um, oh, I should have read that. Pure fun, oh. man. Like, I don't, I don't want to rub it in, but I'm going to. Um, Cody Ziegler, killing it on story. Justin Mason... You know I love you. Um, you're killing it as well. The combination of Justin and Jim Sharalampitis, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, you guys are nuts. The idea of your art and story, color choices, all of it playing together, you guys are a band. And I will tell you right now, oh. when you get to do stuff like this... Oh, that's spicy. Hmm, ain't it though? Listen, if they're watching, they know what I just saw because you saw how yeah. the thing... Oh my god. When you get to play with storytelling in that way, it is absolutely epic. Yeah. Um, Justin, I know you had a ball, especially when you got to showcase that vision. That's gotta be oh, wow. like on your I don't know, bucket list as an artist. Yeah. That's fantastic. But they're making their way to or through Philly mm-hmm. um, as somewhat of a pit stop. And as you can see on the cover, uh, they meet a new a new possible bandmate. A new possible bandmate. Hmm. Um, they have to deal with a big boss that we know and love in association. Oh my gosh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is fun. It's raucous. It's crazy. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, oh. it's not over. Should it's be in the over. world. I would be there. <laughs> yeah. I, I would. So, yeah, kind of amazing. Um, a lot of fun, man. This would, like... I don't know. I don't know how it's doing sales wise. How is that doing? Not good enough. No. Like it's it it isn't doing particularly well here at Comic Time, which okay. is one of those things that just frustrates me yeah. because I don't know why. It has the art, it has the story, yeah. it has the vibe. Okay. You know what? We might have to do like some crazy we'll host a show at the barn kind of thing where there's like some punk band that yeah. we bring in and they're they're here to do a twenty five minute set. They've got six songs, 25 minutes, make it happen. Like, because that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, for no yeah. good reason, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Just, ah, uh, read more, okay? Yeah. Come on, Comic Town community. Come up here and come get some spider punk on you, in you, with you, for mm. you. All of that. My third selection. Yes. Mullet Cop, The Flavor of Danger. Scout Comics, <laughs> uh, created by Tom Linton, or sorry, Tom Lintern. So this fever dream, <laughs> it's it's a dark future where like it's a giant mall basically. Okay, it's God, all right. So it's 
RoboCop, mm-hmm. like, world-ish vibe, but it's done totally 1980s style. Okay. Like, the 1980s color palette, like My- Michael Mann, Miami Love Vice, it. Manhunter Love stuff. It. And it is super, super sardonic. There's so many mullets. It is amazing. Oh, my God. And it's so funny, because, it, like, it's, it's this dark comedy kind of, like, pointing out like the different things about our socioeconomic structure and how things are, are very heavily weighted to the 1%. But it's so funny. Like, I don't That's know awesome. how, how you're able to do that. So, all right. So this basic story in this issue, because they're all one shots. Okay. In this particular issue, these people that are at foam, the evil foam company have figured out how to make a beverage, like an energy drink that when you drink it, it basically makes you high on shopping. So wow. like, so you want to shop and, and you can't stop yourself from shopping. And one of the people that's like in the board of directors for the mall is like, no, that's bad. We can't do that. Like an actual like human being with okay. a conscience. <laughs> of course, they want to kill her. And yeah. so they send assassins. And this is just like, this is spoiling nothing because assassin means nothing when you're like, it's so freaking good. Mullet cop comes in, saves the day in a super 1980s action movie style. Um, yeah, and the interaction. Uh, it, yeah, who is the voice of Mullet Cop in your head? Oh, I don't know. Um, because because it can't. It, it's not not someone who's inherently badass. Okay, like I, they are, but like in a. Oh man, what's the the name of the actor from Eastbound and Down? Danny McBride. I knew you were gonna say that. Danny McBride, That's and then exactly he's got, got the look thinking. too for the live action. Totally, totally so. does. It's oh my gosh! Okay, okay. <laughs> it's just it's so amazing. That is that is that is crazy. I love the colors, though. right? Like like the colors, the art, just every aspect of this hits perfect. Yeah, That's it's dope. just in the unfrozen. Board. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> okay, my last on the good reads you should read: Superman, Son of Kal El, number thirteen. This was so hard to put in this in this pile. Um. It was crazy. It's, yeah, it's just good stuff. Yeah, Tom Taylor, Clayton Henry. Um, okay, so John's boyfriend has been outed as the head of the truth, right? Mm-hmm. So there's this big pushback from Henry Bendix that's like, oh, no, he's the son of my rival. That's why he's saying all these bad things. Not that any of it's true. Um, we we see how bad Bendix could be. Really? Yes. Um, now, I'm not sure if this is the first time Dreamer, um, who premiered in Supergirl, is this is the first yeah, time? Yeah, that's her that, first comic appearance of her. That's what I thought. Okay, so Dreamer is is the first trans superhero that started on a, on a live action mm-hmm. show to be brought into comics. Yeah. So first appearance, um, which is kind of which kind of dope, especially considering that this is clearly a July book. So yeah. we're not even like saying, "Hey, it's Pride Month. Let's put it in Pride Month." They're like, "No." Let's we're just gonna, put it in a gonna, story. We're going to put it in a story. It's not about pride. This is about just putting in characters. Um, but the scale of some things. Let me just show you that. Like, you don't see people like that you, down. You, you don't. You don't at all. Um, here's here's how it started, though, which is kind of crazy. Oh. Right? Oh. And then that happens. And so you can guess what that's filled yeah. with. Yeah. And so, yeah, boom. Boom bad all kinds of bad yeah and yeah yeah and then when he deals with it like that yeah yeah because then what what happens that's such an epic justice league level threat and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna close it i'm just gonna close it on that one right there and let you deal with what you just saw because yes why like is, why is that not on Twitter? Like why am I <laughs> Dude. And now <laughs> with just that little bit, like if they're like, yeah, this is gonna be the next Superman movie, I am there. I am right? buying tickets. I am buying theaters, okay? I want total silence. It will just be me watching that happen. Yeah. Y'all got okay, for those of you that don't know who Henry Bendix is, I mean we're talking Wildstorm. Stormwatch authority mm-hmm. level threat. Yeah. Right? Like, that's him. He created Stormwatch or was Weatherman yeah. at some point, um, but was found to be a total psycho murdering, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. keyhole and was a problem for all the superheroes for a dude that didn't have powers. Yeah. 
Like but he just knew how to do what he did. When it comes to scary bald white guys, Superman he be collecting them, don't he? He like, really he does. <laughs> he really, really does. <laughs> he just feel like bring him yeah. Bendix, Luther, Seymour. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> Curse you, Kal El! You're um, Kryptonian genius! <laughs> With your full head of hair! <laughs> um, yeah, this was a good read. It's very strong. Oh, I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. I love the context and challenge of John needing to understand mm-hmm. what it means to be Superman. Yeah. Like for him to mm-hmm. be Superman. There's things that. For decades, his dad did, especially considering his mom, yeah. where he's not allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. And it's it's beautiful. So beautiful. Tom Tom Taylor. I don't even know why I started to say just Tom. Tom Taylor. You know your name. Freaking amazing. Yeah. Freaking amazing. Oh! And thus, the challenge is over for good reasons that you should read. Yeah. Now we're going to move on to the must read. Yes. If you don't pick up anything, it must be these, these five books. five books, yeah. I was going to say. These five. Okay. We, we boiled it down to five, okay? Yeah. We, it's what we did for you. Um, where do you want to start? <sighs> All right. So, like, my less than intelligent brain it's not didn't that. grab 8 Billion Genies 3. Especially coming off of what happened in 8 Billion Genies 2. I did. I grabbed it. <clears throat> 8 Billion Genies 3. Chucky Soul. Ryan Brown. Again, the setup is everyone in the world has gotten a genie with yep. one wish. Um, the state of things is mm, mm. the world is dark. However, people in this beautiful bar where the bartender geniusly, yeah, geniusly made his wish that nothing outside of the bar will affect what's happening inside. So the bar. smart. But the thing is, that dude probably had been planning that forever. Like he was like, just one day, I'm gonna get a genie, and guess what's gonna happen? Like, boom. Boom. He was ready. He was absolutely prepared. Um, yeah. A lot of this focuses on um, the the guy that that's he's got to go on a journey. Right? Oh, yeah. And oh, after, my gosh. Yeah, last issue, he makes a wish that he can survive yeah. whatever he encounters out there. And, man, does he encounter some stuff. Uh, let's see. There's a guy that wished for. Let's see. Where are you at? Because this one of those things like, who would wish for that? He did. Why would you do that? Yeah, yeah, he, he definitely did. Um, and that's a problem. And why would you wear that outfit? Well, because, yeah, <laughs> Captain Suckall, I don't know. But, like, but then you find out, like, why he was so intent to make this trip. Mm-hmm. Man. Is it a good reason? For context, for very personal reasons, mm-hmm. a little selfish. Okay. A little selfish. But his solution to this trip, well... <laughs> and that's uh, oh, that's womp, 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 womp. so yeah this is picking up context some some very cool um interpersonal stories we're about to find out like the things about these individual people yeah that's about to really get like oh um there was a wish that's made in this one mm-hmm. that is so very sweet and earnest possibly overtly misguided but what we're going to enter now is a brand new age <laughs> oh yeah wow yeah so i mean i get it i get it if you were that age and you were given one wish <laughs> yeah i would do it i would do it without question it's what would happen so i i'm i'm seeing potential conflict in certain places and mm-hmm. spaces and that's what good stories do to you. <laughs> yeah. Pick that one up. Unlike Ryan. Yeah. Did. I instead would like it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, okay. it's, it sounds so, so morose. No, no. But like <laughs> making space for this book. Because I didn't grab this book. Right? Aftershock Comics, Dogs of London, number three, Peter Milligan, Artesita. <sighs> All right. So this is the story that. The first issue had us thinking it was just going to be like old school 1960s uh, gangster. British gangster yeah, stuff. Yeah. And it kind of is. What? Except there's <clears throat> a V for Vendetta ish twist <laughs> where Wait, there's more. some people that were knocked off in, a, in an us or, or them type situation right? actually were part of a government testing thing and they're indestructible. Oops. Yeah. And they've accidentally been dug up. 
and Oops, sir. now they want vengeance. And <clears throat> the vengeance part's really, 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 really cool. You, have, you see how they use their powers and just how freaking ruthless they oh my are. God. But what's interesting is seeing their reaction yeah. to society as it is in 2010 oh when they've been found. So they're completely confused by certain things. Right. Where they're just like, what well, is that? Right? <laughs> aliens, bro. Aliens. You're like, nah, it's a DVD player. Yeah, I like, know. And it's 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 these interactions while they're also oh going God. on the revenge tour. This dude is in so far over his head. Like, I, you know, I it might pull a double wrath bone and just like <laughs> off myself. I just got to go. I just got to go. Or is, it, or is it Lord Carnarvon? Who was it? The, there was like a British. Oh, I don't know. God, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm yeah, from yeah. Irish family, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> and yeah, it's just crazy. Everything's about to hit the wall. It, yeah, yeah, it's over the. Just freaking read it. Yeah. It's aftershock. Yeah, come on. You know, you know better. I knew better, and I still didn't do right. <laughs> Bad Victor. Okay. Um, Dark Crisis, Worlds Without a Justice League, Superman Number One. <gasps> That's a long title. It is a long title, guys. Like I have no we, idea how I'm gonna hashtag them. <laughs> right? Like D C W W H Superman number one. Like that's that's a lot. That's, that's a lot. I guess it's W W A J L World Without Yeah, that's too much. Worlds Without. Um Okay. Tom King, Chris Burnham though. Cannot lose. Clear hearts, Tom King, can't lose. Or why, clear mind. Why why is this yeah. a one shot? Why can't we live here? Right. I want to go to there all the time. Um, this story is beautiful. Okay. Obviously, from the artwork, you can tell that we've got this crazy cool homage to Batman. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the concept. But it's really Superman and John um, in this dynamic duo setting. Um, Superman wearing the classic. I know some people are going to look at that and go, oh, no, that's the Superman Red Sun costume. No, it's the second player from the video game. Mm -hmm. With the, with the gray and red. Yeah. Get your mind right. Okay? It's classic. Um, but we are, we're traveling in spots in time with John. Yeah. As certain ages. <sighs> and his awareness mm -hmm. of some things. And how there's some things that he just can't let slide. No matter what his father instructs of him. And like oh. going up against that. Who clearly is not the friend that we know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he's much of a friend anyway, but yeah. he's not the friend that we know. Yeah. And that becomes its own situation. Um, and he ain't happy that this has happened yeah. because now it's all out war. Um, but it's... Oh God, it's so fun. So fun. This is one of the most poignant... Like, Tom, did you have a kid that graduated recently or something? Because I feel like this is one of those things where, like, you pass these pages along to your son yeah. you go... I wrote this, you know, a year ago, waiting for you. And then you find the kid finally reads and they're like, I always thought you hated me, but now I know you love me. Like, it's one of those, yeah. man. It's one of those. Um, absolutely fantastic. Big shout out to uh, the backup story by uh, my man, Brandon Thomas. This art looks fantastic, oh, yeah. too. Um, this renewing of the vows is adorable. And I love the interaction of all the characters. It's freaking cool. Um, I know you got these pages and was like, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I would love to read the script to this. So, Brandon, I might be bothering you um, next weekend at San Diego, if you don't mind. Um, so bring that with you. Bring it with you, please. I want to read it. Um, dope. All around great book. But a one shot. Like, yeah. <clears throat> I enjoyed it way too much to want to let it go. So if we can just, you know, keep popping back to that world, that would be great. Thank you. Amazing. All right. Speaking of one shots. X-Men Hellfire Gala number one, which is actually kind of number two because there's already been a first Hellfire Gala. Right. But they I didn't put the year on it? No. That would be that would have been helpful. Oh my gosh, that would have been awesome. All right. So it ties in greatly to the Avengers X-Men Eternals crossover that's coming out. And there's also a one shot Judgment Eve. So you'll want to pick that up too. But this one in particular. Let's see. Let's get the creative team. A lot of a lot of creators. All right, so Jerry Duggan. Um uh, on the art, mm -hmm. sorry, on the writing, uh, Chris Anka, Russell Dodderman, uh, Matteo Lali, uh, and CF Via as the artists. So this is the the, the once a year Hellfire Gala. Mm -hmm. It's like a it's like a ball that's held on Krakoa, all the mutants. And for this particular one, uh, they're deciding 
who's going to be the X Men team. Okay. Uh, it was what, last last year was what Scarlet Witch died. Mm-hmm. She got better, um, and <laughs> as they do. Yeah, and and so this one, there is a bombshell that's dropped, and it is really really cool. Um, it, it sets up a ton of intrigue. It sets up what the future of the X Men you know, like next year worth X Men stories are going to be. Mm-hmm. It ties in greatly to that. Axe miniseries Ooh. that's coming up here and kind of does some explaining stuff that I would have wished would have been in the judgment. We didn't review judgment, we did, but yeah, but we but we read we it, read it, but we are focusing on some things that we liked a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And god, the art is gorgeous. Russ just kills it as always, forever and always. I still don't know if I'm down with Cyclops's outfit for the gala. Okay, it's a little Lando Calrissian for oh. me. Oh. But okay, all right, yeah. Mm. There are some. Yeah, I can see. Listen, he brought that from Cosair. Cosair definitely was like, That's, he's he's had that in the closet put since your, put your chest out, Son, put your chest out. <laughs> Show him how the summers do it. Yeah. God, grow some chest hair, boy. <laughs> like it's. It, it's now, re- see, I've been wanting to know what their relationship status is. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we get into some of those interpersonal dynamics for the different characters. There was something that I've been like really, I don't know, wonky about with yeah. with MJ being, but the it, oh. it, it makes sense. And there's there's something there. A little hint there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I don't know if it's. I can't really say that because it's yeah, super, that's, yeah. Kind of spoilery. Really, really good. Uh, there are some amazing cameos mm-hmm. uh, by actual, real and not real, real people. Okay. okay. But yeah. Very, very cool. If you're a fan of X-Men, if you're going to be reading the Axe miniseries, definitely pick this up. Me like you. Me like you a lot. <clears throat> All right. Universally, there's certain names that you see and you're like, yes. Image is definitely one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, Hayden Sherman, very quickly becoming one Getting of those. Getting there, yeah. Um, and now I'm adding Sean Lewis to that list as well. Um, Above Snakes, number one. Now, <clears throat> I knew nothing. Literally nothing about this book at all. However, yeah, I am blessed to have gotten over myself, picked up this random piece of literature, and gotten a chance to experience it. Um, yeah, this is one of those books, man. Mm-hmm. Like, it's <clears throat> got a weird West setting. Yep. Yep. But a super accessible one. Yep. The language is kept very modern, so you aren't trying to figure out what the different slang and jargon are. You're just immediately drawn right into it. Mm hmm. Oh, man. Hayden's art. Like, next freaking level. Is it every miniseries that he does, he gets better? He, yes. And not only is he getting better with just like the illustrations, the, the way he's tackling storytelling, this mm-hmm. two page spread. Yeah. Is one of the coolest, most dynamic, Kirby-esque, but not Kirby at yeah. all, pieces I've ever seen. Oh, it's amazing. It's beautiful. It is It is gorgeous. And, and there's nothing there. Like, you don't know what this is. Yeah. But I'm fascinated by it. Right? I think it's one of those things that as the issues come out, we're we'll going to look more, back and be like, like, spoilers with no context. Right. Like, because literally, when I looked at the cover, I didn't realize what this was. Yeah. But now that I've read the story, I'm like... Oh, yeah. Stupid. Like, oh my God. I knew I was going to love this by the first four pages. Mm -hmm. Um, The first four pages are well-crafted, slow burn spreads, like full page spreads that get you into this story in like the perfect pacing. Yeah. And I just enjoyed it so much. I was like, yeah, this is about to be, this is about to be dope. Yeah. the way that this plays out, yeah, <clears throat> gritty, yeah, gritty, yeah. I like. I would feel bad for the people that mm-mm. are getting the vengeancing, mm-mm, mm-mm. but they you know they it. brought you know they brought it on themselves. Yeah. The color palette, I think Hassan did that one. Um, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. lettering. Did Hay- did Hayden do the color? Oh, he did. Hayden did every. Okay, you know what, Hayden, I can't even with you. Hassan, your lettering though, I do got to give you some mad props because, okay, they always say like when you if you take note of the lettering, then it's mm-hmm. bad because it's taking you out of the the piece. No, not in this case. No, like this is so dynamic that you can't help but look at it as art. Like if you if you're yeah. like, oh, lettering is whatever, and you look at this and say the same thing, I deserve to slap you. 
because yeah. this is art the the oh. you've got narration yes. like like the the generic like you're reading and this is the stuff that's in your head you've got humans mm-hmm. you've got things that are more than human yes uh, and all of that is coded perfectly so good. with the the font choices the 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 bubble text choice or the yep. outline choices it is so like this is so one that kind of hits here. on every yeah god because it's it's it takes that that sort of like cowboy wild west mm-hmm. revenge story and puts it through this weird lens where i don't think dude is I, dude's getting manipulated yeah we just Clearly. don't know how we don't and it's and we definitely don't know who's pulling the strings mm-hmm. but there are some strings being pulled and this is it's still amazing still amazing is Hayden, like, looking at these sketches, is Hayden the heir apparent to Mike Mignola? Maybe. Like, the way he's using shapes and silhouettes, I can't help but feel this way. Yeah. God, it's so pretty. So, good. so, so good. And, man, I gotta, I gotta know, because dude got set up. Like, he did what he came to do. He definitely did. But, but, oh, but there's more. But wait, there's more. There's always more. And yeah. that becomes the problem. Um, man, oh, it's like if, if you're a fan of Unforgiven, yep, it's got yep. it's got that Unforgiven vibe to it, mm-hmm. and splash in just enough of the supernatural because mm-hmm. that's the other thing is like it that's something that could be so easily over the top and, and take you out of it. Yep, but it's got just enough to it. It gives you kind of like a Sandman kind of kind of vibe. Absolutely. Brilliant. Oh my gosh, I just want to see more of these people. Because there's going to be a whole bunch of people that need to get vengeance. Oh, oh yeah, vengeance. they're going to they're going to need to get done up right, and and I think yeah, he's going to do it just 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 fine, just and, fine. And I love the use. You, you see all these movies and novels and, and whatnot where there's always a whole bunch of people that are trying to get vengeance. They actually address that. Like, what does that look like? It's like a union, it's like a team. People just say, hey, hey, you got it? Yeah, yeah, I'm on this one. Dope. Oh my gosh, it's so, yeah. At pro- probably book of the week for me. Yeah, in, without all, in all honesty, without question. And I love how in the back they're letting you know, like if you dig this team, um, here's some more works that you should read of theirs. Yeah, the few definitely check that out. That was fun. Yeah. Um, thumbs, yes. So like that's the thing. Like when you get two creators that when they pair together, they're just telling great stories. Different style doesn't matter. They just tell good stories. Per Baker Phillips, you want them together yeah. all the time, and this, yeah. <clears throat> I love it, Lewis and Sherman, man. I would, I would. It's, it's a band. It's better than Hall and Oates. Yeah, but for comics, I said it. I said it. and I meant it. That's what it is. Um, if you guys felt like we gave you the goodness that you uh, can go into your your you know new comic book day fully informed but not spoiled, give us a like. Yeah. Let us know that you enjoyed what we put down because we did this for you. Yeah, and every week, every week we do this. It- well, and we might have missed one week. Yeah, once or twice. But, like, my, my lawyer handled it. Yeah, so, yeah, it's getting expunged. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, it's totally cool. Yeah, yeah. So, subscribe and hit the bell because that'll let you know when we post this to the interwebs. That's right. That's right. Now, if you guys want to check out some stuff that I've been doing because I've been a little busy these days. Yeah. the hardest working man in comics. You mm-hmm. kind of better make some stuff. Um, right now, there is a Kickstarter going on for our all-ages friendly title, Wonder Care Presents the Kindergartens. Um, we are actually focusing on the second volume, which will be the complete series this is the last half right. of the series this is crazy and that's years dude. years yeah dude it looks so good um we're almost 50 percent funded oh. already so nice. if you guys get a chance definitely check it out i think we're gonna have a little video playing at the end so definitely give it a watch if you like give it a share and if you can give it a pledge because uh we definitely need that support we need you that's mm-hmm. what it is so thank you guys tune in next week we'll see you then bye, bye. I'm Victor Dandridge, the hardest working man in comics. And I'm Justin Castaneda. I'm like pretty good at making comics. I'm average speed. <laughs> you're, you're really good at it. Yeah, Come yeah, on. there you go. Yeah. You're good at it. <laughs> and we are the co-creators of Wonder Care Presents the Kindergartians, which we are bringing for the first time to Kickstarter. Yes, uh, we are bringing the entire series, which includes a remastered version of volume one, which includes a new cover for the free comic book day special, mm-hmm. as well as introducing a new teacher, Mr. Tree. On top of that... We are introducing a whole new team, actually two new teams. Two new teams, that's right. 
in our That's volume right. two trade try a little kinderness yes yes we're gonna wrap up this series with a huge bang with one of our biggest adventures yet and the last three issues are previously unreleased so this will be the first and only way that you can get these stories to round out this epic series and on top of getting the entire series as a reward you can actually get a bunch of additional rewards such as sketch covers uh, a limited t-shirt the what matters story in a poly bag mm -hmm. as well as vinyl stickers we've got all the goodies for you guys and if you love all ages friendly content this is the project for you this is for the kid in you the kids you know the kids you want to be the one that still wears a cape and runs around the kitchen this is that series wonder care presents the kindergartians we're coming to kickstarter and we're looking for your support we can't wait Yes, and we hope you back the project. Tell your friends about it. We're super excited to wrap up the series. It has been a almost decade long journey for Victor and I, and we've really improved as storytellers and creators, and we are happy to share this with you. So uh, give us your kindness, and we'll give you our kinderness. Yes, yes, <laughs> kinderness for everyone. Try a little, try a little. You might like it. You might like it. <laughs> I'm Victor Dandridge, the hardest working man in comics. And I'm Justin Castaneda, the uh, I'm like average, like <laughs> average working guy in comics. <laughs> you know, I have a good speed. <laughs> that is right. Um, we are bringing volume two and the, well, okay, hang on. <laughs> Which contains the new, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You were so good, you were so good. <laughs>